Thanks a lot for inviting me to give this talk in front of this very selected in integrable audience. So it will be also about integrability, but sort of application of integrability, no uh, say excessively complicated technique, but uh, it's rather the work about model, but also with some results. Uh, so, the loom for generalized fishnet CFTs. Uh, <coughs> the loom is uh, shown here. This is the device. Uh, Integrable Feynman graphs. And we will build the corresponding conformal field theories, conformal fishnet CFTs, uh, which uh, have Feynman graphs of this integrable type. Okay, so uh, fishnet CFT was discovered as a special double scaling limit of uh, gamma deformed n equals 4 to the uh, which combines strong imaginary gamma deformation and weak coupling, weak coupling limit, perturbative limit, but the result is not perturbative, of course. Uh, then, uh, integrability of planar. Uh, super young, uh, n equals 4 super young mills uh, <coughs> becomes in this limit manifest and allows to compute many non trivial quantities, anomalous dimensions, uh, amplitudes, and structure constants, because the integrability of the full n equals 4 young mills still is a mystery. We don't know, uh, we have some clues, but we don't know apart from perturbation theory results, like Mina Hans Rembo result. Uh, we don't know why it's integrable, and fishnet CFT gives at least a non-trivial limit where we see this integrability. Uh, so fishnet CFT is dominated by planar graphs with the regular lattice structure, uh, fishnets. Uh, and they are normally integrable via, uh, via uh, SO2D conformal spin chain. Uh, the logic of uh, proposed in 1980 uh, such a such a conformal <coughs> graph as, a, as an example of statistical mechanical uh, problem. So you have regular square lattice. Um, each link here corresponds okay, for example. Oop, I will be careful. That corresponds to to this propagator in any dimension e, and then it, you multiply, you take a product of all propagators and integrate or coordinates. Um, the logic of proposed the general construction of integrable planar graphs based on Baxter lattice and star triangle relations. And we will now we construct it with Enrico um, a generalized fishnet CFT at any dimension generated by any such Baxter lattice. Uh, the model we are building. Um, uh, just a little bit of review uh, of, of the origins of this fishnet CFT. Uh, let's consider super young mills and in the fishnet limit. Uh, here is the action. It's uh, all the double indices are, indices are summed up. Um, you have three scanners and three fermions, and also gluon and gluino. Uh, and uh, uh, so you see, oh, you see, the, uh, the interaction terms have all of them have some commutators of fields. Uh, now, gamma twisting goes as follows: you replace all commutators by Q commutators, so QAB. A, B, A times B field, all the fields uh, are uh, matrices in a joint representation. Uh, N, N by N color matrices. Uh, minus one over Q, B, A. Where the factor Q is constructed as exponent of anti-symmetric combination of currents of R symmetry, SO6 symmetry, and gamma mu is a parameter R3 parameters 
Uh, it breaks our symmetry and all the symmetries. Um, uh, and, uh, what is left is the conformal symmetry times u1 uh, to the power of three. Um, let's consider uh, this. Oh, sorry. Uh, let's consider one scalar, to, I mean, one term out of these uh, four, four scalar interactions. Uh, I denoted the fields like x and z now, phi 1, phi 2. So there is, for example, such a term with few commutators. Um, if you write it explicitly, it looks as follows. And uh, you, you notice that this the, yeah, these terms can be depicted graphically as vertices of interaction of this field theory. Uh, so that, for example, this term corresponds to the crossing of z line. It goes from z to z bar. Yeah. Complex scalars, so you put arrows here from z to z bar, and red one from x to, to x bar. Here it's like clockwise ordering from blue to red, and here anti-clockwise ordering. And you have here q square, this uh, gamma three, uh, the twisting parameter e to the i over two gamma three, and here one over q square, and all this types of vertices don't have, uh, you have this ordering because those are color matrices under the trace. All these fields are ordered around the vertex. vertex. So you see that um, only this term enters with some positive power q squared. So one wants very much to send q to infinity, g to zero, v coupling limit, and keep the product Feynman then and then all other terms just disappear in this limit. That was, that's the idea of this limit. Uh, let me also point out that uh, gamma twist is a topological factor on planar graph. Uh, I will uh, make a little introduction in what, is, what are planar graphs and planar limit. Uh, so gamma twist produces quasi-periodic boundary conditions, for example, if you have graph with the topology of cylinder, and for example, you have a blue line of propagators in this graph, <coughs> and red propagators cross it in various directions, then according to this picture, the weight of this graph, uh, there will be a weight for this graph, q squared to the power of number of uh, propagators going up minus number of propagators going down. And for example, the closed lines of propagators don't contribute at all. Uh, yeah, the power of Q. Uh, so uh, this is already sort of an image of spin chain which emerges on planar graphs, uh, closed uh, spin chain. And um, Q will play the same role as um, <coughs> twisting, nor usual twisting of spin chains, um, which is Topological, it can be concentrated on one point uh, of the uh, on this lattice. Okay, um, so using playing with these limits, uh, q to infinity, g to zero, you sort of peel off your graph, your Feynman graphs of various two complicated graphs, and the juicy heart will be the infinite safety. Uh, uh, just uh, for those who doesn't know much about planarity, planarity means that you draw all propagators by, by double lines because they are matrices having two indices. So that all these are propagators, the interaction vertices some, for, for some abstract theory. So if you compute uh, the contribution of couplings and n for this graph, it will be lambda square and square. Say for this graph, it will be lambda four and square. So different powers of lambda, but the same power of n, the maximal power actually. But for this graph, it will be, it's easy to count the number of uh, index loops, the closed index loops. Here you will lose the power, two powers of n, and this graph is, uh, should be dropped in the, in the planar limit when n goes to zero, or to infinity, sorry. So that the graphs which can be drawn on the, 
on the sphere or they, without self-interceptions uh, are called planar graphs. And integrability, we pretend on integrability only in this limit, large and limit. Um, so roughly these graphs have the maximum, maximal number of faces um, with given, uh, in a given order of perturbation theory. It's very simple due to the Euler theorem for graphs. Uh, you'll get planar graphs with, when it's the maximal number of faces. Okay, uh, now mm, if we go to this limit, we introduce three, three effective couplings, G which goes to zero times uh, this uh, factor, e to the minus i gamma over two, there are three of them. Um, so gamma goes to i infinity, Already you see that the theory is not ordinary because we have this bizarre limit, uh, i infinity and not just infinity. Uh, and uh, g goes to zero for i fixed. You uh, find from n equals 4 young wheels this theory with three boson bosonic fields and three fermionic fields. So with usual uh, fermion and boson kinetic, boson and fermion kinetic terms, and the direction looks as a set of chiral vertices, chiral interactions, like you have ordered fields, like phi, bar, phi 2 bar phi 3 bar phi 2 phi 3 under the trace, but the complex conjugate, the Hermitian conjugate is absent. That's why the theory is chiral, non-unitary. A similar story about fermions. So this theory produces mm, already an interesting kind of Feynman graphs, which are uh, which have some rigid structure, lattice structure. In n equals 4 young wheels, you don't understand whether it's lattice or not. It, all the graphs, the graphs are very complicated. But in this limit, you see emer the emerging uh, lattice structure. Here, dotted lines are fermions, uh, solid lines are bosons, and of course, uh, bosons, crossing of two boson lines, <coughs> Bosonic for for uh, for scalar vertices, but for example, if you have uh, four Fermi, the, the two Fermi lines crossing, or Fermi with uh, fermionic with bosonic lines crossing, you have to decode it in terms of power vertices. So, and it happens in the unique way. You can always decode what is drawn here in terms of Yukawa vertices. So already it, it won't look regular, uh, very regular when you insert Yukawa vert vertices, but originally it's a very nice dynamical fishnet, as we call it. The light is fresh, but you can move lines better with each other. So it's a great mystery why this model is integrable. I think it's a very interesting example of integrable lattice model, which uh, still waits its resolution, and it might be an important step towards understanding of the ability of the whole n equals four young wheels. So it's a, an interesting problem for uh, integrability professionals. Um, and uh, okay, and uh, if you, if we go, if, oh, sorry, if we put two of these couplings, like xi1 and xi2, to zero. All Fermi terms disappears because xi1 and xi2 enter in all couplings here. And only this term is left from interacting terms. And that's the model which we study, we study in more detail. It was studied extensively. Why do you call this model dynamical? Uh, because these lines can move. So you have to... Oh, okay, well, in the usual you fishnet, can, you can at home. You can, yeah, you, you, now we'll see the rigid lattice uh, mm. in the next transparencies, but here all this line can move, lines can move through the intersections, and this will give new Feynman graphs, which are so also like within this theory. So it's like later in the loom, you can also move, it's the same thing. That's, mm -hmm. that's another example. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. So it's still integrable, you can move these lines, but you have to sum up in some sense over all configurations. Okay, now 
uh, now, there's, okay, it's by Schuyler Fishnet C F T four, which is most studied because if you leave only one coupling, it's this simple theory. And you might ask whether, whether it's uh, just a usual for the uh, for uh, I mean uh, five four interaction. You will have boring. Uh, zero charge, uh, the theory is a garbage uh, in the infrared. It doesn't, uh, um, doesn't show any interesting physics, but in fact this theory is a conformal theory. Um, to see it, let's look at the, uh, the planar limit again. And uh, what we have, we have two propagators, two colors, like for one and for, for, for two. All of them are standard massless propagators, and you have only one vertex. And uh, chiral, uh, the chiral vertex, and anti-chiral vertex, which is just complex conjugate, is actually missing. And this leads to important consequences. First of all, this dynamical fishnet, since you drop one out of three types of lines, becomes just a regular lattice. This is a typical structure of uh, Feynman graphs, planar Feynman graphs in this theory. Somewhere in the middle of the big graph, it's, it will be always such a lattice. And um, no mass or vertex renormalization, and the coupling psi doesn't run with the renormalization group. For example, if we try to renormalize the mass, this graph is simply absent because it needs both vertices, one chiral, one antichiral, so that <coughs> and it Propagates in higher order into higher order pertur of perturbation theory. <coughs> so it's a conformal theory. What about the tet pole? Uh, tet pole is absent. Uh, tet absent by just by, uh, by definition of. Uh, no, that's a divergent angle. Uh, yes, yes, but uh, uh, but uh, tet poles are uh, simply dropped here. Yeah. Is it It's uh, normal ordering of the fields. No, not at all. Um, uh, uh, how these planar graphs you obtain from uh, the loom look globally? So locally, yes, you saw it, globally. But the, but the, well, the graph depends on the boundary conditions, the complicated <coughs> boundary conditions. On well, the boundary, you can have complicated. On the observable, it depends. Yeah, for the particular observables, the bound, the boundary, there will be complicated things. But if you take Big well, graph lines. Uh, yeah. uh, it's a fragment of the graph. Yes. Or you can say that you fix the external legs, legs, the fields, and then it is a real. Your lines are not infinite. They are, they are finite. Yes, yes. Not necessarily infinite. They can end up. The, the line on the left with a loom. Yes. They are finite. You can again fix some, some external legs for a quantity, like a trace of product of fields around. Uh, but I present it as fragments of big Feynman, which is an integrable fragment. Of fragment. Okay, the, what do we study here? We study local operators um, of the form you have, pro, you have product of all types of scalar fields, uh, all types of derivatives uh, acting on these uh, scalar fields, permutations under trace. So, and the problem, the first problem which arises, say you can visualize this kind of uh, trace as product of operators. Say here there are five ones, but there are sort of magnon insertions into this spin chain in terms of the phi field phi two, etc., etc. So you can always visualize it as a spin chain. Uh, it spins lying in uh, are the coordinates in the dimensional space. Um, and then we have to study, first of all, the spectrum of conformal dimensions, anomalous conformal dimensions, as functions of xi of the cut. For that, we have to calculate the two-point function. And there was a big sequence of papers which uh, essentially Ah, sorry, so which study the question of spectrum. But let me make a little detour about this theory, about a very interesting, in my opinion, property of this theory. It was already discussed. <coughs> I posed some questions to the people who study also non-unitary theories. So this theory also 
uh, has a sort of a PT invariance, uh, and which leads to the reality of spectrum of conformal dimensions. Uh, namely, T transformation is just a complex conjugation, uh, and P transformation will be the uh, uh, transpose of the matrix, the transposition of matrices. <coughs> Then, you see, uh, take the interaction term, phi 1, phi 2, phi 1 bar, phi 2 bar. If you do complex conjugation, this is T transformation, of course, uh, uh, then the chiral interaction becomes anti-chiral. The order of fields changes. Um, because you take Hermitian conjugate under the trace. And then you do P transformation, it comes back to, to the same form. So you have this symmetry in the theory, which actually leads to, to the spectrum, to the re reality of the spectrum. Uh, our operators are not necessarily symmetric with respect to this PT transformation. For example, this operator goes into that one. And if you now PT transform some correlator of such operators, so operators, are, those are new operators. But uh, of course, everything you can do with this correlator is just to take the complex conjugate of dimension, which says that uh, you have both uh, delta and delta bar in, your, in the spectrum of your theory, or both of them are real. So the dimensions are, are either real or they enter in complex conjugate pa pairs. Um, and this reminds uh, this uh, PT invariant quantum mechanics of Bender and Bircher, uh, which has actually a lot of experimental uh, consequences. There are many works in this direction. Uh, those are simple Lagrangian uh, Hamiltonians. Uh, uh, if you give you my I here, and uh, P transformation x to minus x will return the Hamiltonian to original form. And so you have the same phenomenon here. Um, okay, then uh, we can now, uh, it's a review of some work which was done in computing various correlators uh, for point functions. So for example, if we take the correlator, uh, the operator phi 1 to the power n, the local operator, uh, the correlation function, oops, the correlation function will have only these graphs, like a globe. You have phi-1 lines of propagators going from uh, south to north pole, and uh, the parallels are phi-2, the propagators of phi-2 fields, and you cannot draw any other graph for such a correlator of these two fields. Just topologically, it's impossible for one of the graphs. Then you can uh, send x to infinity. In fact, you have to compute this graph you cut off, the, you uh, remove all these propagators uh, close to uh, coming to X and you have to remove. In fact, this graph gives you the renormalization of propagator and, uh, of this uh, operator. And, uh, you can extract by epsilon expansion the, this singularity 1 over epsilon and sum over uh, this sum over uh, powers of the coupling gives you the anomalous dimension of the function of Xi. There are also more exotic graphs like multi magnon spiral graphs, also integrable, of course. Uh, so the, if you do this UV reduction, it will be a sort of spider web, web graph. Um, and those are typical fishnet structures uh, for the Feynman for <coughs> graphs. But of course, the graphs can be very complicated. Those can be only could be only fragments of the graphs, but the boundary of the graph could be quite complicated for three-point functions, four-point functions, for example. But some four-point functions have been computed. For example, uh, if you have the, uh, the mean of pr the product of these two traces, you have four uh, coordinates. So this is sort of a two-spin system, <coughs> two spin, spin chain, which can be, uh, the spectrum can be computed even without integrability, just mm -hmm. using conformal symmetry as 
we know from just spin chains, the problem of two spins is very easy. It's just the symmetry of <coughs> it's from the symmetry of the spin chain. So, but here, since you have non-compact uh, group, you have uh, principal series representations in your spin chain, uh, then the, compu the computations are quite non-trivial and results are sort of non-trivial, interesting <coughs> functions are come out explicitly and the set of dimensions um, for intermediate operators. Um, uh, then another interesting activity, and one will elaborate <coughs> in this book, uh, is the study of so-called so Wasser-Dixon and Wasser-Dixon type four-point functions. It's this kind of four-point function, topology of disk. These four points are fixed. <coughs> Uh, you have the fishnet structure in the middle. And also another activity is related to amplitudes and Youngian symmetry. Uh, so you cut out of square, uh, regular square lattice such a graph with fixed legs, for example, or such a graph. And uh, these are correlators, single trace correlators. Uh, uh, all these phi's are different points, of course, in the space. Um, and this object, this correlation, is <coughs> Youngian symmetry, as was shown in our paper with Chicherian, Müller, Logger, Jeng. Um, and then in specific limits, how it's called, I always forget. There is a limit when you transform the correlator. Uh, Jean, you're right. I automatically write Zheng because this is, I had the student Zheng and the student Zhong. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> there is a presentation sometimes. Are we supposed to read uh, the green, green names, no? The green names? Why, why not? Well, you see, did you not notice what what was what was bizarre? Well, I can see that there are some sort of fluctuations in the names of the. Yeah, they recognize it. Yeah, you know the person. Huh? That's what okay, and. <coughs> Uh, some results, some already results related to the Ruby book. If we want to compute already, uh, for example, for this trace phi 1 cube uh, 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 operator, uh, the anomals, the spectrum of anomalous dimensions, uh, for three spins it's already integrability. You cannot just apply symmetry. Three spin. Uh, uh, so, uh, after some calculations uh, in our paper, uh, this paper, uh, we found, for example, how, uh, it's what the, uh, the, 12th, uh, the 12th loop result. Summing up to these graphs, you obtain, uh, in principle, the anomalous dimension, summing up over, over the waters over the number of loops with the coupling constant. Um, and numerically, the dimension for this operator can be, uh, the dimensions, the spectral dimension can be found with uh, uh, very impressive precision, which uh, by the method worked out by <coughs> this group. So in our paper, this method was applied and you see, you see the phenomenon typical for this uh, uh, theories with PT symmetric theories. So here, for example, you have two real dimensions. Then the real part of uh, anomalous <coughs> dimension disappears, and suddenly, the, at some point, approximately 0 0.2, the imaginary, the complex conjugated dimensions appear. Typical behavior of this of this theory uh, of those uh, PT symmetric non-unitary theories. Uh, just a flashed here with the equations which finally we had to solve. Already getting these equations was very complicated. Mm. Uh, so this, is, this was Baxter equation, which is explicitly contains the coupling, <coughs> the I3 and the dimensions, and uh, supplied by quantization condition, which was also this 
just from from these two equations, we extract these results in perturbation theory. For this particular equation, what were it's for length two? You no, know, it's for length three. Ah. You you have uh, four further ah, yeah, yeah. equation, but it's, <coughs> in this case, it's uh, uh, it's um, fortunately it uh, factorizes in two second order equations. But you're right. That's why there are Q2 and Q4. <coughs> solutions. There are four solutions in principle. Okay, okay. so yeah, I think here I finished the review for just this fishnet, standard fishnet CFT, two scatters, and um, uh, now I come to the, to actually to the main new subject of my talk, uh, so our new result with, uh, uh, with Enrico Olivucci. Uh, but first I described this old paper of Sasha Zmolochik on which the construction is based. Um, just the review of this paper. Uh, so Zmolochik have proposed to, uh, to, to, to draw, to Construct the integrable Feynman graphs in the following way. Uh, you take the Baxter lattice, the connection of intersec intersecting straight lines, uh, and you dash it in sort of a checkerboard manner. Yeah? You have even and odd faces. The pattern is clear here. Um, and then so you have two sub lattices. Uh, then you put vertices. Uh, one, for example, in the middle of white faces. In the middle of each white face, you have a vertex uh, to which you ascribe a x1 in d dimensional space, say x1, x2, uh, xj. Here it's x1, x2, for example. And then you have this angle, alpha between two lines, and you draw the propagator from x1 to x2, mm, uh, of the, the power of which depends on the angle of this intersection. Here is the explicit formula from the logic of paper uh, for the propagate, for propagator between some points, neighboring points, xj and minus xk coordinates is modular this distance, uh, I mean the, the distance between two points in d-dimensional space in the power depending on the angle, alpha, jk. Here the angle, alpha, one, two, okay. And you draw all these propagators, you take a product of all these propagators along the lattice, you integrate over all these points in d-dimensional space, and this is the statistical mechanical model which proposed and solved, essentially, at least for free energy. Uh, then the integrability is completely based on star triangle moves, star, star triangle relations. Namely, if you have such a fragment of <coughs> this graph, you can move this line through the curvacing, you get this graph, then if you had product of three propagators here, uh, here it will become so the face of three propagators, here it will be, become the star and you have extra integration in X. Or you can, sometimes you move back, you remove the integration and come to this face, the product of, of three propagators. And of course, the uh, uh, this star triangle relation is well known. Uh, the integral, this integral here uh, over three propagators uh, uh, with the sum of powers equal to d, this uh, ABC uh, sum is equal to dimension. And uh, on the right hand side, you have product of propagators with, sort of, uh, with conjugated dimensions. Um, and this factor V is the ratio of gamma function. This is a um, particular case, probably, of all these star triangle relations, which were, which you saw in the talk of Volodya Pajanov. Uh, okay, so that's the review of the logic of paper. Now, how do we, how we, do we use it? <coughs> um, uh, so we will construct the loom for for fishnet CFTs from Baxter lattices. Uh, uh, Baxter lattice uh, will be taken, uh, so will have only m 
uh, m intersecting lines with m slopes. So for example, we have m equals 3. So you have only three angles in this, or two relative angles say, in this construction for m equals 3. So I draw it in colors to stress that the slopes are different for three lines. Uh, then the next step, you add any number of parallel lines, parallel to those any number of green, uh, blue, or red lines. So you get this kind of lattice. You can, can of course, move these lines, uh, leaving the angle intact of, such, uh, of every line. Then you build, according to the logic of prescription, the, uh, the Feynman graph out of this. Uh, namely, you checker, you uh, uh, color it in, che in checkerboard style, and you put vertices, and you draw the Feynman graph. And the propagators will depend on the angle through which the propagator goes here. Again, you take the product according to what was on the previous transparency, and so is the graph. So, how to construct the theory which has only this and precisely these graphs, where m is fixed. Of course, m can be taken four, five, and any number, but m equals three is the best example to demonstrate. Um, so, we have to build all the vertices of such uh, of such graphs. Uh, for uh, and uh, we have to introduce m. Uh, times m minus 1 scalar fields. So m times m minus 1 over 2 is the number of intersections of different lines, yes, of lines with different slopes. You have m slopes. m equals 3 will be taken later. But you have also, um, you see, you have this kind of intersection and you have also the dual intersection. And you have to introduce this, uh, not only the field, say, x, but also, also the dual field, u. With the, with the angle here, which is pi minus this angle, yes. Um, so you have, the, to each field you have to, you add the dual field. But these two of them are appearing in the same diagram, right? They can appear in different parts of the same diagram, easily. Mm -hmm. um, they can appear even in the same vertex. And well, really really locally, they can appear together. If you, Checkerboard. Uh, if you make checkerboard, you cannot draw this propagator, yes? But in different parts of the graph, of course, you can meet both. So these are just notations for dimensions. You have, for m equals 3, you have three fields, x, y, z, with dimensions a, <coughs> minus b. And you have three dual fields, which essentially are d over 2 minus these dimensions. Sorry, I would uh, remark my point. If you consider uh, a square formed by only those two directions, right? Mm -hmm. If you consider a square face formed only by those two directions, so blue, green, blue, and green, then you would precisely obtain a quartic vertex which, which involves two field X and two field C. So they can really appear mm -hmm. locally yeah. Yeah. Okay. next to each other. You will share a vertex. You will have a vertex with two propagators of type U and two propagators of type X, okay. which is, of course, neutral mm -hmm. and scale invariant by your consideration. Anyway, at least I didn't lie when I said that in the same graph <laughs> you can have both. Okay, now you <coughs> just uh, take the, uh, the kinetic part of this section, just phi bar, uh, uh, then box to the power d uh, over 2 minus dimension of each field, and you sum up over i, you have, why did I write over 2? You have here m, m minus 1. Division over two, m minus one scalar fields. For each, we have this section. You see, the action is non-local, but in my opinion, there is no point for conformal theory to have local action because uh, conformal theories are not about lo locality. The propagators will look the same in local or non-local theory, uh, qualitatively. Well, in local theory, only particular so powers would be allowed. Uh, yes, then it's a particular limit, but I never understood why the theory, should, the conformal theory, should be local. It's not necessity. Okay, so we have, of course, some of our theories are local, but this is the most general construction. Now we have to construct the vertices, yes, uh, for all these interactions. How do we do it? Essentially, we 
do the, the replacements of each pair x, y to the dual field w, etc. I will show it in Michael 3, FCFT, Fishnet CFT. Uh, this will have 18 vertices already. The number of vertices grow, uh, grows very quickly with m. Uh, so one should start always from the highest vertex. Namely, we have three pairs of lines here, two red, two green, and two, two blue. And uh, we take, this is a six scalars, and it, uh, the vertex is x, y, z, x bar, y bar, z bar. Then we can apply star triangle and, for example, move this green line downstairs. What happens? So this green line comes here. These two propagators are replaced by one propagator. And this propagator is a dual field. So you replace x, x y by w field. So you get this uh, quintic, uh, quintic vertex. And there are, one can easily see that all possible moves give six quintic vertices. They are all here. Then you do, it, you, uh, you continue, you you move this blue line through this vertex, you get quartic vertex. Another, then you have two insertions of the dual field. You have nine such quartic vertices. And finally, you move this one up and you get a triple vertex. There are two triple vertices, 18 vertices. That's the whole construction of the theory. Uh, we listed all the vertices. All of them can have arbitrary couplings. A priori, a priori, any such graph is, uh, any graph will be, graph by graph, it will be integrable graphs, and there is no reason to choose particular couplings. Uh, but uh, again, there are some subtleties. Uh, we have to add double trace terms, so called double trace terms, um, which are essentially splittings of single trace into. To the, uh, in the, to, to the product of two traces. You have to add them because they are automatically generated by a normalization group and you have to, uh, to tune the corresponding couplings, which are usually, in some cases, they not real. You have to tune to the critical point, but it's uh, a well-established industry how to do it. Mm. So, so these couplings shouldn't be related by these transformations? Uh, not directly, not directly. Uh, so you don't want invariance yeah, I mean, for these shifts? Or? So, uh, simply you build some graphs and you, you see that uh, you, can re you can build some non-planner non, uh, graph which emerges. So from I think the question was rather about these, these vertices, right? Yes, the size mostly. Well, simply this, trace, right? this vertices split, the trace splits into two traces, the product of two traces. And this really is generated, these two <coughs> traces, like if you have n trace in the action, trace traces of the same order of, uh, as n trace in, in the action of the theory. So no, normally there is no reason them, for them not to appear. They do appear, and we classify them more or less here <coughs> in our paper. So it's not a problem, but I have no time to go into these details. Five minutes. <coughs> Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> before, and then, and then before the questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, I will uh, continue. Uh, then uh, just a comment. Uh, if you have a Feynman graph, for example, you have a, uh, a graph uh, of disk topology with fixed external legs. And uh, you have this graph is integrable, and you start doing somewhere inside uh, star triangle relations. Moves, for example, you can move this blue line with crossing, you get this product. So, all these graphs should be summed up now for this particular quantity. But the summation is very simple yes, you just take one graph, you compute it, the rest is given just by this star triangle moves, and it's very easy to calculate. Namely, you have if you compute this graph, you sum up over all uh, moves, which lead to a particular based graph, for example, this one. 
this one pr probably will be very difficult to compute. That the base graph will be very complicated, maybe hardly computable, but integrable in many cases. I mean, it can be probably computed. But the rest is simple. You sum up our graphs, the star triangle moves. And then I also wanted to say that this, this kind of graphs obey Youngian symmetry. Uh, and we are trying to, to generalize our paper with Loibert, uh, Chicherian, Müller, and Jong uh, about <laughs> diagrams to this case, which is quite straightforward with Fyodor and Mishnikov and Victor. Okay, then. Essentially, this is the main construction, and this is the paper in progress, um, which we call checkerboard FCFT, which is a particular example of our loom CFTs. Uh, I think an instructive example. Namely, you can always put many of these couplings, like you have many, many couplings, What's when you have. Boundary condition, I'm sorry. Huh? The boundary condition. For, for what? At the end of the. Uh, it depends is it on free boundary condition or fixed boundary condition. It depends. What is nice about this uh, fishnet CFT formulation? It depends on what quantity you compute. For example, here. Uh, oh, sorry. Here, I mean that you just take trace of product of scalar fields with various colors, uh, with fixed coordinates. Then you have uh, a graph of this type. Yes, these uh, external legs correspond to fixed fields. Uh, for example, this boundary condition. I mean, this theory generates uh, many graphs which are not within some logic of picture. Only some, if you take big graph somewhere in the middle, they start developing this fishnet structure. But the boundary can be complicated. That that's the complication. Uh, the, the computation might be very complicated. For example, if you start uh, computing the structure constants for this conformal field theory, it's a very complicated uh, fishnet uh, graph, and probably Enrico will give some examples of various boundary conditions, as you say. They, de they depend on physical quantity. Well, yeah, is it normal that you have an odd number of uh, red uh, legs uh, and uh, no, in the, bub the bubbles. Yeah. yeah, you have three, le ah, three green legs. It, it was, one leg was amputated on the way. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, um, so checkerboard CFT. Checkerboard CFT is an example of loom M equals four, four slopes. But we, uh, how many, like 131, uh, couplings in M equals 4 loom. Enrico has a formula where just you can give M and you can compute the number of couplings, which grows enormously quickly. But let's put all couplings instead of, instead of 2 of them to 0. You have this kind of theory. You have four fields with some inter uh, powers or boxes here summed up to D. Otherwise, it will be not conformal. And two iterators, <coughs> only two couplings. Uh, xi1 bar xi2 bar xi3 xi4, and here it's xi1 xi2 xi3 xi3 bar xi4 bar. They're not complex conjugate. It's still non-unitary theory. And uh, now, if you draw, try to draw a graph. Uh, typical Feynman graph, it will be again the rectangular lattice, but it will be an alternated uh, system in both the, say the <coughs> lattice will consist of green lines, which are intertwined by, by black lines, two different slopes, and the same in this direction. It's intertwining, I mean, uh, lines. Okay. Just a second. Um, then, uh, what is nice here, uh, the you can of course try to solve this graph by transfer matrix uh, approach. And 
corresponding <laughs> product of four propagators will actually be given by, by R matrix, which is well known here, and including the spectral parameters. So the graphs here include spectral parameters. Uh, and one can easily show this picture from the talk. Uh, you can show by star triangle moves that this, uh, uh, this R matrix satisfies young box equations. And uh, there are many uh, interesting particular cases of this checkerboard fish, uh, CFT, we called it, due to this picture before. So, for example, if we put one of these Ws to zero, you have one term uh, which, you know, the zero power, then it's just uh, ultra local. You integrate over Xi4, uh, X4, and you get uh, uh, six six order interaction. So that, uh, I mean, this is the transformation. You just contract here these lines and these lines, you get triangular, uh, uh, re yes, uh, regular triangular lattice. And um, in three dimensions, when all Ws, the rest of three Ws are one, you get uh, precisely the ABJM fishnet, uh, which uh, means a similar uh, double scaling limit uh, of uh, in the f uh, as in n equals four young mills uh, <coughs> from John Simon's theory, which is the integrable sister, three dimensional sister of n equals four super young mills. Okay, and also just maybe the last transparency before the uh, <coughs> rooms. Uh, uh, we have also. We can restore the big BFK limit. It's curious, um, the limit of zero spectral parameter and some other parameters fixed, so that you can restore from the uh, R matrix the Lipatov uh, interaction, uh, the Lipatov Hamiltonian. Here it's the Interaction, uh, which is, uh, if you take product, of this, you precisely get sum over these H's, which is uh, the part of spin chain for interaction with drawn. So it is included into this uh, <coughs> CFT. And now this topic I, I will drop, uh, the computations of, I already guessed that it, it's impossible to <coughs> <laughs> no, it was sort of, I don't know how to jump in order, everybody laughs when <laughs> one skips the transparency, but I have to learn how to just uh, jump over. Uh, <coughs> okay, <laughs> and uh, now comments and prospects. So we constructed for a loop fish, uh, fishnet CFT based on integrable planar graphs. Uh, uh, dual to Baxter lattices. Um, then fermions and arbitrary spins can be <coughs> included in the generalized fish uh, and we have such a section in our paper. Uh, then double trace terms I don't discuss. We have to <coughs> trace terms and classify them. Then uh, we can compute scaling dimensions of those various theories. Uh, or PE coefficients and point functions, maybe <coughs> talk, there will be something about that. Uh, uh, of course, the Youngian symmetry of generalized <coughs> amplitudes is an interesting question. Can we supersymmetrize this loom? And also, can we lift some of these fishnet CFTs to, to the full, full that Susie gauge theory? This is another interesting question, and also due to this comment, following this comment about PT symmetry and reality of the spectrum, uh, maybe one could find condensed matter and quantum physics applications for fish and seeds. That's it. Thank you. We have zero minutes for the questions, so uh, please, uh, some quick, the, quick, the, quick the, questions. The right I, I am using my phone. <coughs> <I see. laughs> yeah, so, so, Bologna, you, you uh, 
conceived a very powerful technology or method to generate all possible kinds of fishnets we, we know. So, but maybe my question concerns the, the slides you jumped over. So does, does this uh, offer you uh, computational advantages to, uh, uh, towards this uh, known fishnet? Can, can you uh, use this to, yes, to, to, to obtain results? Yes, numbers. I think, uh, well, first of all, I showed already many numbers, yes? But you, may, you mean some, uh, some uh, already, uh, some, some of these CFTs which are not just... Uh, fixed, fixed some, some uh, fixed graphs, say, for well, example, this... Uh, what I dropped is just a two-spin uh, two system, yes. which doesn't need integrability. Uh, for this checkerboard, one can really compute explicitly, sort of explicitly, uh, the dimensions of the four-point functions with length two spin chain, so like a cylinder with only two spins. Yes, yes. Yeah, which we worked all these methods with Grisha and Kolev, um, and uh, with three spins, it's more complicated. It's an interesting problem, but it's uh, all in this standard. Mm -hmm. um, law of integrable theories. You have, for example, uh, intertwined spin chain, you multiply transfer matrices, then you get already some interesting set of, uh, two, uh, of uh, conformal dimensions, say graphs which compute conformal dimensions, so you can use integrability to compute them. But uh, as I showed Kole Gromov, uh, this new, uh, our, our newly constructed uh, Loom CFTs, and he said, but who will solve all this? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe somebody will be interested. Of course, uh, it depends on whether we can find interesting applications. And I'm pretty sure there should be many, <coughs> in spite of the non-unitarity. I can make a small comment on this Yangian symmetry. If we have Yangian symmetry for these more general graphs, then it also helps to learn something about new graphs, because you can expand for dimensions close to normal dimensions. Mm. But when you have the result for general dimension, you can actually expand near the uh, points you are interested in. So I think that's mm. one uh, possible application also yeah. of these yeah. general yeah. ideas. <coughs> say a couple of words in his talk probably about this uh, um, uh, Youngian symmetry. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, well, uh, I would like to ask, so the box that call these lattices uh, Z-invariant. Z-invariant? Z. Z. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not A-invariant, not B, Z-invariant <laughs> lattices. So where you can move the lines parallel to itself, uh, and so the, say, the, the expression, the partition function doesn't, doesn't change. Okay? So, Actually, you can deform the lines. So if you fix the irregular moves, even more. But what Baxter uh, <coughs> say that suppose we have just a few intersection angles, like four or maybe ten. So we and many lines. We can move all the lines to infinity and leave only one angle. It's uh, one of my pictures. In the, in the, uh, in the center. Mm -hmm. So in that case, all the uh, infinity angles is a boundary condition, and then we can calculate partition function. In this way, he uh, gives the theory that the partition function is a sum of the partition functions of the regular thing. Yeah. Do you uh, use this? That was my, uh, I don't know. I, I bring every graph for this particular quantity to this graph, to this kind of graph. Maybe it's not the most convenient graph, but it seems to me the... No, it's even more than that. So, no, no, no. so the, you, you live in the, in, in the center only one instance, and the rest you push to infinity. No, but you, you cannot be, do... If you have some number of vertices, you cannot... But if you have a Feynman graph, it doesn't work. For example, if you have Feynman graph, but still you have... Infinite graph, <coughs> it works. Yeah, That's just about... Infinite graph. Ah, I wanted to... 
I remember now what I wanted to say about uh, the Basso Dixon type of configurations. For example, we are now working out with Enrico and I. Uh, uh, if we work out the um, part, these four point functions for, for checkerboard security, so you can really compute using integrability uh, generalization of Bassa Dixon. So it's a new kind of four point function. I think quite so integrability really can do many things here. Yeah, okay, so I think uh, that's all we need. And uh, I thank the speaker.